I feel like all of us have a story of our own through which we share our dreams, our passions, our joys and our sorrows. Some stories in particular strike a chord with us and make us feel more connected. I'm kind of hoping to do the same. I believe we are all dreamers and it takes a lot of courage and faith to turn our dreams into reality. I still have a very very long way to go and this is not my success story. However, every little thing that I have achieved has only been possible because of a very special person in my life, the wind beneath my wings, and that is my mom. Let's rewind a little bit. I grew up in a perfect family. My parents were madly in love with each other. My mom being the caring and devoted mother that she is would hardly even put me on the floor. She loved taking care of the family and her life revolved around us. She didn't really get out of the house much. The exciting bit of her day was that she tutored about 20 kids from my block. My dad being the goofy one that he was, he gave the best piggyback rides and I thought that he loved me a little more than he did his alcohol. Well, sadly, it turned out to be a sham. One day, walking into my room, I saw my mom on the floor, just crying in pain and I had no idea why my dad had hurt her. I was so confused and angry and all I knew was that she did not deserve any of this and it was completely wrong. But still, my parents continued to act like nothing was wrong between them for the sake of our families. As sad as it is, normalizing domestic violence in Indian households is very, very common. Families inculcate values in a way that deem men to be superior. And in a patriarchal society, if a woman was to raise her voice, she was either considered rebellious or even uncultured. The absence of Encouragement and empowerment in young girls and women was also very prominent. When my mom raised her voice, nobody came to help, not even her own family. They went on to say things like, you weren't raised like this, you were married off into such a nice family, mm -hmm. nobody in her family has ever gotten a divorce. And of course, hearing things like that, she felt really helpless. But she decided to put her foot down and eventually my parents split up when I was about seven years old. I had no idea that behind this domestic and timid woman was a very strong-headed, courageous mother of two. She decided to leave that toxic environment and start a new life because she knew that that was the right thing for us. Even then, nobody really helped because... Women were to be blamed for a failed marriage and they were the ones that were asked to make a compromise. Well, my mom did not agree to that. She didn't want to make a compromise. And I'm so grateful that she took that step. The good news is that my mom fortunately did find work. But it came at the cost of a lie. In the fear of losing that job, she hid the fact that she had two children. In 2002, motherhood meant losing all prospects of a job and it's actually spectacular to see how far we've come from that. I feel like every woman should be self-sufficient and needs to know that that will not affect the upbringing of your children. I feel like people worry that if a working mother spends too much time away from her child, that it will affect the child's cognitive development. Statistics do show that working mothers spend time away from their children, but they tend to make up for it with better quality time rather than quantity time. I feel like being a career-driven woman doesn't make you any less competent to be a good mother. Of course, um, we experience that. My mom didn't really spend as much as, as much time as she did before and we spent most of our ch 
childhood in the care of our grandmother. My mom realized that slowly as, a, as time passed, as a single parent, she wasn't really able to give us the time and the attention that we needed. And she made the decision to send us off to a boarding school so that our education wasn't hampered. She still tells me how that was probably one of the most difficult decisions that she had to make. When I went away, we were only allowed calls on weekends at the school. And as my mom got busier, she used to forget to call me. And I used to joke around and say, I know we don't really exist for the world, but you do have two children and you're supposed to call one of them on the weekends. I feel like as her kids, we had the understanding to give her the space and the time that she needed or else she wouldn't be able to excel at what she was doing. Growing up, boarding school was a threat all parents gave their kids when their kids misbehaved. And my parents did that too. I still remember my boarding school conversation very clearly. It was my mom and I both in bed, bawling our eyes out because she had just told me that I had to go away. I was so sad that day, but she explained to me how it was very difficult for her to look after a nine-year-old, a three-year-old and focus on the job all at the same time. To convince me, she promised that she would work hard, save up and then get me out of the school in two years. I agreed to go away because I felt like she was already doing so much that this was kind of on me. My first year at the boarding school was extremely rough. I was miserable. I was homesick and I had to keep my parents separation a secret because we thought it was frowned upon. My mom also thought that I would maybe be treated differently if people knew. So we kept it a secret. But a couple months into my school life, I confided in a friend and I told her about my parents' situation. And she assured me that I was not different and that my mom was really brave. I felt so much pride in that moment that I didn't really care if people knew from there on. Now that I look back, I know being in a school away from my loved ones as a teenager, I kind of got around to making decisions by myself, which was really helpful. I felt extremely responsible for my younger sister, who then a couple years later joined the same school that I was in. I used to keep checking in on her, making sure that she was settling in okay. I have a very strong connection with her and I feel like my love for her is very maternal. I take a lot of pride also in her upbringing because I kind of feel like I have a big role in it. Um, I didn't really like bothering my mom with the little things. I mean, it definitely was confusing at times, you know, figuring out school and friends and having a crush on someone at school. It was confusing, but now when I look back, I realize that it was a very good decision that I made my decisions by myself. It really helped me in the long run. And now both my sister and I have a sense of individuality and independence. And we've definitely gotten it from our mom. Very early on, when I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life, my mom always told me one thing. She said, it does not matter what kind of job you want to do, as long as you're ready to put in the hard work. And it's something that you're extremely passionate about. And I feel like that stuck with me for the longest time. It's something that I might even teach my kids. I mean, who thought documenting my life and being on social media could become my career? Another thing that I picked up, and here's a little secret, I picked it up from a Bollywood movie. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but hear it out. It makes sense. <laughs> it went something like this. The dialogue was that you should follow your heart if you go wrong, it'll be your mistake and you will own it. I feel like that makes so much sense because you need to follow your heart to know if 
you're going to succeed you're going to gain from it and if you don't gain something from it you will learn from it and grow from it i feel like that was really helpful for me whether it was dating the wrong person or making a wrong financial judgment having a misunderstanding with my friends or taking my family for granted all of these things are going to teach you something as long as you don't repeat your mistakes again i mean of course so yes i would say that making mistakes is 100% encouraged i i've been so grateful because of the women that have been in my life i've been brought up by some really heroic women and they are the ones that have taught me to be my own person to grow to follow my heart to earn my own money and i feel like i also saw my mom doing all of those things which is why it kind of came very naturally to me i mean my mom has been absent for half my life but it doesn't matter because i know that all those years she's only spent trying to secure my present and my future when i was young i wanted to be an actor and i used to have these make believe award shows in my bathroom and i don't really know if it was because it was my imagination or because i deserved it but i always won the best actress award i don't know how and i always had a speech ready for my award <laughs> so i used to always imagine my mom sitting in the audience just really proud of me you know smiling ear to ear and in all of my fake speeches she was the only one i would thank i know that i will never ever be able to repay her for everything that she's endured in the past 25 years and i might never even win back best actress but i kind of want to strive every day and work hard so that i see that look on her face one day lastly if you have kids now or you're going to have them 10 or 20 years down the line teach them everything that you wished somebody had taught you the future that we so dearly hope for it is dependent on the endeavors of today i mean i feel like we need to teach our kids how to be independent and invest their money and be kind to others and yourselves this the stereotypical image of a good mother is imposed by the society and my mom never really tried to fit into that image in fact she went ahead and created her own image and i feel like that is amazing because a good mother is not she's not limited when it comes to the values that she imparts on her children so yeah whether it's a 14 year old or a 40 year old let's let's not ask them when they're getting married or when they're having kids let's ask them if they are happy if they are loved maybe also if they want a raise <laughs> let's compliment women appreciate women love and respect women they are invincible and they make this world a better place i know they did they definitely made my world one uh.